you're all very welcome this morning to our Sunday morning service, Caledon Presbyterian Church and Minterburn Presbyterian Church. We're delighted you can join with us to worship. Um, our announcements, just a couple of small things. Our web pages have been uh, a little bit updated. Um, so if you want to check those out, caledonpresbyterian.co.uk and minterburn.org. Um, after last week's announcement, I've added a standing order form to minterburn.org. So you can uh, go in there and you press a button, um, however one presses a button on a web page. Um, but of course, if you have any questions about any of the finance related stuff, just talk to Joan or to Jennifer, that uh, would be great. Next week is our final week in John's Gospel. We're finishing the I Ams. So we're going to be starting into Jonah uh, soon after that. So uh, if you like, Jonah's a very quick book to read. If you want to have a read of that before we get into it, that would be, that would be great. Um, uh, it's one of those stories we, we think we know well, but it's always good to refresh ourselves. And then just announcement wise, the plan is to have Children's Day on the 21st of June. I mean, it won't be a usual Children's Day. We'll still be doing it like this. But uh, hopefully we'll be having Children's Day and actually two separate Children's Days, one for each church. That's the plan currently. Uh, but we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, thanks uh, for to Alan for his reading. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, and to Emma for putting together our children's spot uh, this week. Our children's spot is, is fabulous as always. So very excited about that. The big thanks to Emma and the Sunday school teachers and parents and children themselves and everybody else involved. Uh, we are uh, going to start now our service of worship. And as always, we're going to start it with God's word. And I'm just going to read uh, a few verses from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary uh, and so we're going to, to praise our God now uh, together as best we can uh, by singing how deep the Father's love for us.
prayers to God, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in praise and thankfulness. Not because everything in our lives or in our world is perfect, but because you are perfect. Because you are most worthy of praise, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter how they may change and our moods along with them, Lord, you remain the same. You are the great God, the maker of heaven and earth. You are surrounding your people, protecting them, watching over them. You will never be shaken. You endure forever. We trust you completely and we praise you for that. Lord, we praise you for Jesus. We praise you for the rescue plan that brought him to live among us and to give his life for us. We praise you that we can have peace with you through faith in Jesus. We praise you that even though we rejected you and turned away from you at just the right time when we were still powerless, Jesus died for us, for the ungodly. Thank you for demonstrating your love to us in this way. And Lord, we confess to you that we have sinned. We confess the sins that no one knows and the sins that everyone knows. We confess the sins that are a burden to us and the sins that do not bother us because we have grown used to them. We confess our sins as a church. We have not loved one another as Christ loved us. We have not forgiven one another as we have been forgiven. We have not given ourselves in love and service for the world as Christ gave himself for us. Father, forgive us. Send your Holy Spirit to us that he may give us power to live as by your mercy you have called us to live. Uh, and Lord, we bring our needs before you now. We pray for those who are ill, who are undergoing treatment, who are in recovery. We pray for them and for their families, for the medical staff involved. And we ask you bring help and healing and minister to each in our church family who are suffering, who are struggling, who are lonely, who are fearful, who are worried about the future. Lord, we ask for your helps, help and bring all our needs to you. And Lord, we thank you for answered prayer. We know that you hear us and you answer and we thank you for answers to our prayers in recent weeks. Lord, keep us faithful in praying for our needs. And we pray for this world we now live in. We pray for wisdom and grace in our policy makers and politicians. We pray for the difficulties involved in easing the lockdown and ask for your guidance and your leadership and your protection for the civil authorities as they make a path forward. We pray for our own churches here in Caledon and Minterburn that you will lead us and direct us in the paths that we should go. And we pray for the wider church as we all try to think about churches reopening at some stage in the future, how we will do that, what that will look like. Lord, as we bring our prayers before you now, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I always look up for my prayers, look in the wrong place. Um, so in a moment, a couple of things are going to happen. Uh, first, Alan is going to read for us from John's Gospel. Um, and then after that, there is going to be uh, another children's spot. Um, I didn't get to be uh, involved in it this week but um, uh, I am very much looking forward to watching it uh, again myself. So first of all, over to Alan for his reading. This is Sylvia Haddon doing today's reading. John chapter 14, verses one to seven. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. 
trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you will be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This morning, Sunday school are going to tell us about how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In the Bible, in John chapter 14, verse 6, it tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. Hi, I'm Beth Spence from Winterburn Church. Beth, what do you think Jesus meant when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? I think that it means if you read in the Bible, you can learn all different things about him. And if you believe in him, that means that you can go to heaven and live for eternal life. Now we are going to have a song that reinforces the message that the boys and girls from Minterburn Sunday School have been telling us. We hope you will sing along. Goes from Cora, what did you think Jesus meant when he said, I am the way, the truth and the life? Well, I think that he said, he said that when we were born, he had, he, we loved him and he cared for us and he loved us. And when we grow up, we have to love him so that he will love us. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father. Except through. Me, John chapter 14, verse 6. Stop and listen to God. Jesus is only the way to heaven. <sighs> yum, yum, yum. Let us pray. Dear Lord, 
Thank you for all your goodness and all your blessings to us. Thank you for all your great love and care for us. We especially want to thank you for taking care of all our families throughout this coronavirus outbreak. Thank you for all our great NHS workers and key workers who are working so hard to keep us all safe. Thank you for your word which tells us you are the way, the truth and the life. We pray that you will keep us following you day by day and fill us with all your peace and joy. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning we are continuing in the I Ams and today we're thinking about I Am, the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this may be the most divisive of all the I Ams and that is saying something. At the time, however, it wasn't particularly divisive for the disciples. Like many things for them at this point, it was probably more confusing than anything else. Only 11 of the 12 are left at this stage. Judas has already gone to betray Jesus. Lots has been happening. The disciples are worried and on edge and, and Jesus is spending these final hours before his crucifixion, before his arrest, talking with them and equipping them for what is to come, training them, encouraging them, praying for them. And so really beautifully at the beginning of chapter 14, and this is such a well-loved passage, Jesus tells them not to let their hearts be troubled. Don't be worried or disturbed by any of the things that are happening around you, he says. He reminds them of their faith in God. And Jesus asks the disciples to believe in him, Jesus, the way that they believe in God. He gives them these wonderful words of encouragement and hope. In my father's house, that is in God's house, are many rooms. If that way are not so, but I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And as Jesus speaks, we have this wonderful image of these wonderful rooms in God's presence, in the Father's presence, perfect rooms, perfectly prepared. And it's so lovely and homely and encouraging. And Jesus finishes by saying, you know the way to the place where I am going. Well, Thomas, he rather spoils this beautiful moment. He says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Without Jesus, they have no idea what that would even look like. What, what would that even mean? And Jesus replies, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In other words, Thomas and fellow disciples. In other words, you do know the way because you know me. When Jesus says, I am the way, Jesus is not pointing to the way. He's not talking about the way. He is clearly stating, I am the way. No more, no less. If you want to get to God the Father, you have to go through the way. That is, you have to go through Jesus. You have to, for there is no other way. Jesus is it. No one comes to the Father except through, except by me. It's pretty clear. And he's also able to say he is the way because he is the truth. And that, that means we can trust him and what he says is true, but it also means that he himself is the true picture of the Father. If you want to know what God the Father looks like, then you look at the Son. If you want to know who God the Father is, get to know who the Son is. If you want to get to God the Father, if you want to get to his house and to have one of those rooms prepared, of course, God the Son is the one to get you there. He is the only one to get you there. And Jesus is able to say he is the way because he also is the life. 
In fact, we thought last week about he is the resurrection and the life. He's also the light of the world. He is also the gate. All salvation, all hope, all life is to be found in Jesus. For he is the way, the truth and the life. The disciples were a little confused and people still are a little confused. Their problem, the disciples' problem was that they did they still didn't fully get that Jesus is God. There have been lots of explanations and demonstrations, but they didn't fully get it. Our problem nowadays is that we see various routes to God. And Jesus just appears to be one option among many. Maybe we think a good life will do it or doing good deeds. Maybe we think other religions will get us to heaven as long as we are committed and sincere in our faith. Really, is there much difference between any of them? Or maybe we think going to church will do it. Maybe we think being a good Presbyterian will be enough. Well, if you do think any of those things, you should be getting really angry at Jesus right about now because he is clearly stating that none of those things matter, not one of them, not in any way, not ever, not as roots to God or to heaven or to eternal happiness, not good deeds, nor other religions, nor Protestantism, not even Presbyterianism. The only way to heaven, the only way, is through Jesus himself. If you put all your trust in Jesus, you are in Jesus and he will take you to heaven. If you are not putting all your trust in Jesus, you are not in Jesus, you are not going to heaven. That's what Jesus is saying to the disciples when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. It is remarkably, heartbreakingly clear. For Jesus in the Gospel of John, he just, he doesn't leave us with any options. He, he repeatedly and clearly shows that he is exclusively the only one who can offer us salvation. The only one who can take us on the way to heaven, who can lead us in the right path. He showed it so clearly that he was crucified for it. And if these were all just words... If Jesus was just a good man who talked a good talk, well, maybe we could just shrug and keep our options open. But Jesus came not just with words, but with a plan and in universe changing power. Within ours, Jesus is crucified, but it is through that crucifixion that he made the way for us back to God. He made it with his body and blood. He made it through being punished for all of our sin. The way that he made for us back to God is dripping with the blood that he shed, all to make a way for us to get to the Father's house. In response, the one thing we can't do is shrug and keep our options open. So for those who trust Jesus this morning, we will be taken by him to his father's house and what an amazing hope that is through all the ups and downs and difficulties and confusions of life. We have that hope and it is in Jesus and it is unchanging. For those who don't trust Jesus, that is the hope and the promise that he is holding out to you. Trust in him and know salvation through him for he is the way the truth and the life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to respond to your word to us. Speak to each one of us today through your Holy Spirit. Help us to grasp the richness and wonder of Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life. Help us to worship. Help us to turn to him for salvation. We pray in his name. Amen. And now in closing, we are going to sing together in Christ alone.
now as we close our service, uh, I don't think we've actually done this for a while, let us say the grace together. Uh, so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>